back at the beginning of the year, I laid out my crochet goals for 2023. One of those was to continue to crochet myself some more clothing. And another was to reduce my yarn stash as much as possible before I bought anything new. Well, today we're taking a swing at both because I'm attempting to make a toadstool slush mushroom dress entirely from yarn that is already in my stash. My other clothing projects so far have been pretty basic. And if you're interested in seeing any of those, I'll drop some links down in the description. But for this one, I want to try and level up. I want to try something slightly more difficult you know just push the limits a little bit so here's what i'm thinking i'll make the top half of the dress first i'd like to go for a peasant slash milkmaid kind of look with the puff sleeves and you know the the roughly bit at the bust here i don't actually know what the roughly bit is called but i think this gets my point across then after that i'll crochet the skirt part and at this stage i don't know if i'll crochet that separately and then sew it to the top or if i'll just crochet the skirt directly from the bottom of the top part that's a future problem i might even crochet a petticoat to give the skirt some sort of you know poofiness volume volume is the word i think is the, i think volume is the word you know what i mean it makes the skirt go out a little bit. So that's the outline for this project. I've already chosen the yarn that I'm going to use. It is, uh, I don't know where that went. The mushroom just disappeared. Anyway, the yarn that I've chosen to use is Lion Brand Heartland yarn. I don't know much about this yarn. I haven't used it, but the reason I have it is because I got it really cheap at the craft store. And it was one of those ones where I thought I'm definitely going to use that. And then I never used that. That is the yarn I'm going to be using for the top half. And I think it will work pretty well. I mean, it's red. That was really the only prerequisite. Now I'm going to break this top down into steps. Full disclosure, I have no idea what I'm doing here. If it turns into a huge disaster, I will stop and look at some tutorials. But I would like to actually try and figure this out for myself. I think it's a good way to learn, is to make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes. That's going to be my go-to, wing it. And if winging it doesn't work, then it's going to be YouTube tutorials. Plan A and plan B. I've decided that the first step in my top is going to be to crochet the under bust section. So this will be basically a band that goes around my waist here. And then I'll use that band as a foundation for which all the other crochet parts of the top will be built upon or crocheted upon. First things first, I will need to measure my waist crochet a chain to that specific length join the ends of the chain to form a ring and then crochet in the round until the band reaches the right width which for me is going to be the distance from my underbust to my waist right so this is the band that i've made and it's going to sit around my waist like that. Let me put it on and I can demonstrate for you. Make sure I didn't knock my mic out of place. But this is the waistband. I'm, I think I've got it the right height. I don't really want it too much longer. So we'll stick with this for now. But if I need to, I can always come back and add a couple of rounds to the bottom. No big deal. But my next step... I think is going to be to add the back and underarm section so if I find my start slash end of the round which is where my stitch markers are uh, there they are got them so I'm going to bring that around until they are in line with sort of like the front of my armpit here like so where the, like the sleeve of this is I'm going to line them up here and from there I'm going to crochet from the front of my right underarm along the back until I reach the front of my left underarm on the opposite side, this point right here. And then I'm just going to continue crocheting back and forth in rows there until I get to like this height. So right up under my arm. That is step two, but obviously when I do that, that's going to leave like the boob area all open and exposed. And I'm thinking after I've done that back slash underarm bit I can come back or even directly off of that crochet the ruffled part that I want at the front but I'm not going to worry about that just yet because I want to get this back section done first so 
Step number two is now finished. So I've got my waistband, which was step one, and now step two, which is the back bit. At this point, I'm a little bit concerned that I didn't come forward enough. So on this side, it's still like under my arm, which is where I want it, but I think I could have come forward a little bit more. This whole thing is going to be a process of trial and error. And because that's the case, I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm going to crochet the front part next, and then we can see how it looks. I'm probably not going to frog the entire thing if I do that, but when I make a, another one after this, because I'd like to build upon this pattern, improve it, and then I can recreate it. When I do that, I can make any adjustments then. So from where I have finished off, which is this section here, I'm going to go straight into crocheting the ruffly bit. Bit of bad news, I kind of went overboard with the ruffles. It doesn't look too bad when it's just like this, but when you put it on, it's just a bit much. So I'll need to frog this and I'm not looking forward to that because I used almost a full skein to make these bloody ruffles, but that's why I've got my yarn winder out. I'm going to do that now. Next time I used double crochet and I basically did two rows of double crochet in each of the single crochet from the waistband and that it's just really too much. You I mean, you can see what it looks like. Maybe you don't think so, but for me, this is definitely too many ruffles. So my plan is to, when I frog this, I'm going to redo it using the same technique, but I'm probably going to use half double crochet this time. And I might slip stitch across a couple of stitches down the bottom here to sort of cinch them together. Hopefully that will give me ruffles like this, just not so many. Right, so that's the plan. I don't really want to frog all this, but that was the whole point of this exercise you make mistakes and you learn from them, which I've done. I'm not going to be making ruffles like this ever again. Version two of the ruffles is a major improvement over the first version and I used significantly less yarn as well. So let's give this a try on. And as I was crocheting the first lot of ruffles, the double crochet rows, I was sort of thinking, oh, I don't know, probably just covered my mic. I was sort of thinking like, I'm not liking how this looks. So I was a bit on the fence about this whole mushroom dress thing. But now that I've done the half double crochet version, I am back aboard the mushroom dress train. I really like how this turned out. So, can you see? So it's still a little bit loose at the top. It does look better, but it's still a little bit loose. To fix that up, I will maybe crochet a cord or something and just tie these or cinch these together. But I'll wait until the straps and the sleeves are done first. Speaking of which, that is going to be my next step. So I will start from the side here where the rows of my back part meet the ruffle. And I will crochet a strap that will go up over my shoulder and connect to the back here. Because I made, I think I made the back part a little bit too short. I've got either side there. So it is just under my arms, but I would have liked it to come a little bit more forward. So I'm thinking the strap might have to be crocheted onto the, the edge of the ruffle here, but that's something I'll just have to play around with and, you know, tweak if necessary, see what works best. But we're getting closer to finishing this top and <laughs> I'm feeling a lot more confident about this now than I was when I first crocheted the ruffles. I can stop groping myself now and I will go on and crochet the straps. Mm -hmm. 
The straps are now done and luckily there were no major mishaps in this case. So let's have a look at these. So you can see they go from the front to the back. And you know, I'm probably at the point now where I can stop wearing t-shirts underneath this thing, but never mind, I'm not taking it off now. But now that the straps are finished, my final step for this top piece is going to be to crochet the sleeves. The straps ended up a little bit wider than I sort of intended. I don't think it's too bad, that's why I haven't frogged it. But because that's the case, I don't think I'm going to need to make the sleeves quite as long as I thought I might. And because this part's come out a little bit further than I sort of expected, I don't know if I'm going to go for the the puffy sleeves because I think it'll look kind of ridiculous if the puffiness starts from here. I was kind of picturing it starting from the shoulder. So I'm not 100% certain which route I'm going to go yet. Uh, I might give it a little bit of puffiness, not too much. Then again, I'm thinking it might look better if I just do sort of a straight sleeve, maybe decrease down a little bit. Yeah, I'll have a think about that one. And then I might try, what am I gonna try first? I might try a regular old sleeve first, see how that looks. And if I don't like it, I can frog it and I can try a puffy sleeve after that. But yeah, I'm kind of at an impasse at the moment. I don't know which way I should go, puffy sleeve or non-puffy sleeve. As you can see, I didn't end up going for the puffy sleeves. I think I was right in that it would have looked a bit ridiculous if I had started the puffiness from this point here. But I actually like how these sleeves turned out. Overall, let us just give you how it looks. So overall, I am pretty happy with this design. There are a few critiques I have at this point. I don't think... I have the straps in the correct position. As you can see, my top starts <laughs> falling off the shoulders a little bit, but a couple of things, I do intend to neaten up these edges here. So that might add a little bit of length to that. So bring it in a bit, but if that doesn't work, I will make like a, a chain or something to go across the back to keep those two straps connected and stop them sliding off my shoulders. I will be adding details to this. We obviously need to turn this into a mushroom or toadstool. And I'm probably going to add, like I mentioned earlier, I think add a cord to this so I can just cinch that a little bit tight. But for my purposes at the moment, this top is finished. And now I need to add the skirt. So the skirt is going to just be crocheted directly off here. I was thinking about crocheting the skirt separately and then sewing it on, but I do think it will be easier just to crochet it directly off of the bottom of the top. I did it. Both the top section and the skirt half of the dress are complete. All that's left to do now is to add some details and I have a few ideas of what that could entail. Example, I'm thinking of crocheting a scalloped edge to the bottom of the skirt here, which is the reason I've left the, <laughs> the yarn attached to the skein. I'm also considering adding some ribbing to the sleeves and I might do that in white just because I think it'll add a little a little extra something something but it'll also neaten up these edges here. I might add a bit of ribbing or even just a border to the the neckline as well. Again for a little bit of additional detail but also as a means of neatening the edges because the sort of raw edges don't look the best when they're exposed like that at least in my opinion. I mentioned previously that I was going to crochet a cord so that I could cinch or tie off the ruffles at the front and at this stage that is still the plan but I don't know how that's going to work out in practice. So I'll crochet one and then we'll just have to see how well it works. I probably should have left maybe a chain one or a chain two space at the top of the ruffles where I could weave that through. But the stitches, 
you know, it might just work as it is, but we'll just have to try it and see how it goes. Another thing I think I mentioned previously was adding a some sort of tie off to the back because the sleeves kept slipping off my shoulders. I may still do that, but depending on what I add to the neckline and how it changes it, I might not need to add that tie. I'll make any changes necessary to the neckline first. And then if after that, I still think I need a tie to stop the sleeves from, from just slipping off my shoulders, I will go ahead and do that as well. Of course, the final most important step in the detailing process is going to be to crochet and then sew on some white spots because I'm going for that mushroom slash toadstool look. And after that, this thing will finally be complete. I'm actually really excited to see how it turns out. I'm facing a bit of a dilemma here. I know I said the spots were the most important details. However, I've grown rather attached to the way the ruffle at the front looks. And I don't really want to cover it up with these spots because the yarn I've used, it's pretty rigid. And if I sew it to the front, the ruffle is not going to have that movability. So I don't really want to do that, but at the same time, seriously but at the same time I still want a mushroom dress here's what I'm thinking I will crochet some spots but I might place them in strategic positions I might put some down sort of the bottom section of the top maybe some on the sleeves some on the other sleeves maybe a few on the back instead of covering the entire thing in spots I'll have them spread out in what I hope is an aesthetically pleasing fashion. In the end, I went with the spots. It was a really good choice making this dress in the middle of winter. At last, my mushroom dress is complete. And I'm gonna say, despite a few flaws, I am pretty happy with this thing, considering I was just making stuff up as I went along, experimenting with different things. I really like how it turned out. I was going to show this off outside, but as I mentioned, it is winter here and I am freezing, you know what? I'm gonna put my blanket on. I'm sorry, I'm gonna cover up the skirt, but I've gotta put my blanket on. Hopefully before this video goes out, we'll get a nice day and I'll be able to take this outside to show it off a little bit better. But for now, we're sticking, we're sticking in here with the blanket. And to be fair, the top half's more interesting anyway, so at least you can see that. Right, let's break this down a little bit. As I said, overall, I'm really happy with it. There are a few things I've taken note of, which I will improve for next time. I think I already mentioned, I didn't place the straps in the correct position. So my sleeves do tend to slip off my shoulders a little bit. What I was planning to do was put a little strap or something, a closure across the back there to prevent that from happening. But I've chosen not to do that because as it turns out, my niece kind of fell in love with this dress. So I said she could have it for her dress up box. So I'm going to make that, that closure, more suitable for her her little size rather than myself because I have made a few errors in this dress I want to re-crochet it and you know address those fix those up on my next attempt the things that I want to fix up are a the straps I need to move those inwards a little bit the the shape itself is okay I don't mind the the straps being out here it's just the slipping off the shoulders if the closure works I could leave them at this width <laughs> at this width but another thing I've noticed is if you look from the back uh, it's probably hard to tell oh, when I'm stretching but the fabric or the crochet it bunches up a little bit maybe you can see it bunching up a little bit and I don't know if that's down to the incorrect positioning of the straps or if I've made the sleeves too large at the armhole I'm gonna have to remember to move this <laughs> 
or if I've made the sleeves too large at the armhole here. Again, that's something I will have to address in the future. Another thing that I'm not going to be doing again is using this particular yarn for the skirt. It's very rigid, very stiff. It's 100% acrylic yarn and it's quite a, a thick weight yarn too. And I don't like it. It doesn't drape very well. The only reason I used it in this dress is because I just wanted to de-stash. I wanted to use it up, which I achieved that. But I won't be reusing it in any other clothing projects going forward. I don't think it's very nice yarn to crochet clothing with. This, on the other hand, the, what was it called? The, I don't know. If I remember when I'm editing, I'll put the correct name for the yarn down on the screen here. Lion Brand. Heartland yarn but this yarn was really lovely to work with so I wouldn't mind crocheting some more clothes from this particular yarn from this brand I really enjoyed working with it and it's nice and soft and it just it moves well because I'm not that far along in my clothes crocheting journey yet my vocabulary is a little bit lacking so I don't know the correct terms to use it just it feels nice to work with and it feels nice to wear so I will be using that again if I can but yeah those are my main thoughts on my mushroom dress uh, another thing I'll do is I will nix the scalloped edge I think it looks okay I'm just not a I'm not a scalloped edge kind of person. I just thought scalloped edge would go good with the whole mushroom slash toadstool theme. And I was correct on that. It's just, it's not for me. So I will be nixing that from future dress projects. But overall, really pleased with my mushroom dress. Probably could have added a few more spots too. If my niece wants those, I will add those in for her. My favorite feature by far is the ruffle or my my second attempt at the ruffle. If you watch that part, you'll know that I did, I did bugger up on my first go, but the second attempt, really happy with it. I might even make myself a top using a similar design rather than another dress or in addition to another dress. We'll see how we go. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. If I have it, again, if I'm able to film it, I will put in any additional footage of the dress after this so you can have a bit of a, a bit of a better look at it. Thank you all for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it if you think it's worth sharing. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see you all next week with another video.